Hey, everybody. Um, okay, there's something I've, a very traumatic event in my life that uh, I want to talk about, but there's a lot of very strange aspects to this story, so I'm naturally very hesitant to discuss it, but I feel I need to discuss it. I mean, I, I don't have any doubts about the, 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 you know, the facts or the truth of what I'm saying, so... And if someone else has a, you know, logical other interpretation of my facts, I'd be more than open to hearing them. Uh, but maybe I can actually get through this without touching on any of the weird stuff, just to give you sort of a, a general skeleton that I can start to flush out little by little as I go along. Yeah, there was this, this girl I knew, like, uh, in her early 20s, and I was going out with her. And, uh, you know, we worked at the same bookstore, and, um, you know, we, so we had this sort of a romance, but it was a, I don't know, it's, you know what they call it a romance, I mean, she was very, uh, frigid, and never got into anything, so naturally we kind of went our separate ways, but we always stayed friends over the years, um, you know, and you know, she would help me out from time to time, and, you know, and I would buy her presents for Christmas and birthdays and stuff, and I don't seem, I mean, you know, I don't know. I have a lot of friends like that over the years that, that, that like, uh, we weren't really close friends, but they made it a point to stay in touch with me and to make themselves available to me. Anyway, uh, so she was like, uh, she was like, she got a house in, in Oakland and she was like bugging me about like her, she had a basement, a big basement, and she said I was always welcome to come and live in the basement of her house if I ever needed to. And I was like, gee, thanks, but I'm thinking, you know, my back mind is like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. It's not a good idea because I've heard too many stories about, you know, our roommates who were friends when they became roommates who weren't necessarily such close friends after that arrangement had been dissolved. So I didn't want to do it, but then like a bunch of like very, very strange things started happening where I was in Santa Clarita, which is something I want to get into later on too. But anyway, these events kind of really freaked me out so much that I decided to take her up on her offer. So I pulled up stakes and I moved up to the Oakland and I moved into her basement. And almost as soon as I moved into her basement, it was like, she, you know, I thought we would be kind of chummy and hanging around and stuff like that. But, you know, she was always at work. When she did come home from work, you know, I would be upstairs and meet her when she came home from work and talk to her. She's like, oh, no, I need some time alone, blah, blah, when I come from work, I got to decompress, blah, blah, whatever, you know. And then, you know, and she would take trips, like, for a few weeks at a time. Of course, I always took care of her cats and stuff like that. So it was a, it was, it was, it was a useful arrangement for both of us, I suppose. And, um... So I was, and, and what, but did, did, what happened was, like, we didn't have any conflict because, like I said, we hardly ever saw each other, and I always, I always took care of the cats, and I didn't do any damage to the property or anything like that. And so, but then, like all of a sudden, like uh, one day, she decides to kick me out for like no darn good reason, and was very adamant about it. She gave some reason that she wanted to refurbish the house or something like that. But she never did. Anyway, so I, she, she kicked me out of the place. And I, luckily, I had my grandfather's cars. Because it would have been a real nightmare if I didn't have the car. So I, I lived in the car. And, um... Yeah, she kicked me out. I didn't have any place to go. She knew I didn't have any place to go. Um, I could have stayed. I could have, like, had the plops over there and produced a piece of mail to prove I was living there and say she didn't give me any notice. But that would have only bought me a month. So, really, I didn't stop. It wasn't worth doing that because it probably ferment even more bad blood between us. <laughs> I guess if that was even possible at that point. And, you know, I'm not lying here. It's like I didn't do anything. You know, there's no cause and effect here. And so I can't help but think that was like part of her plan all along. Now, it'd be kind of a weird sort of revenge plan be, to be staying in touch with somebody for like 20 plus years just to get them in that position and kick them out with no place to go. But that's apparently what she did. Um... And then after she kicked me out, then she started like acting like, oh, she didn't want me coming around because I'm crazy. And she would even put on a big act, like run away from me, like, oh, Ron, you're crazy, you're crazy, get away. And it looked so fake, you know. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, gee, it's kind of hard for me to talk about this without all the weird details, but, uh, she was, okay, I'll start getting to the weird details now, but the weirdest stuff I'll save for later. Uh, she had, um, she had the, 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 the house bugged with electronic surveillance. And I found this out because 
Well, I always thought it was really uncanny that even though she was hardly ever home, that she always seemed to, like, know everything that went on when she was gone. But then, like, one time she came back, and she started parroting back to me the exact same, exact same, like, conversations I'd had with, with people she didn't know. And even when I was suddenly in the house by myself, word for word, like, I remember one time, I was like, I was like, why, Dana, I was talking to somebody, Dana's always up in my business, I'm okay, she's always up in my business. I mean, I mind my own business, that's what I'm all about, you know, I just, I just don't interfere with stuff that doesn't concern me. And then she, she was talking about something completely different when she came back home, and she used those exact same words, talking about somebody else. And, you know, to me, that was, like, obviously a, a hint that, that this, she was, uh, you know, was aware of everything I was doing. I mean, because I used very, you know, for particular sequence of, 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 of my own words, which she you know, recited back to me verbatim. Um, so I knew that she was uh, eavesdropping on me electronically, and um, just going to, we're starting to get to the word stuff here. She was even paying people to, like, befriend me and, like, record our conversations. You know, uh, so like this is like some really hev heavily sick shit. I mean, she, people that were actually in her employ. I mean, of course, you know, guilt background information here. She had plenty of money. She's working a nonprofit, which is a total scam. People are overpaid as hell, and they do as little as possible to help people. It was the Irvine Foundation in, in San Francisco, actually. Her name was Dana Brownfield. Uh, she's retired from that now. Of course, she had, she made so much money, and she invested it all in stuff. So she's probably rolling in the green. Um, Okay, my mouth is getting dry here, so I guess uh, that's it for my weird story, but please check back. It'll get progressively weirder and weirder, as if it's not weird enough as it is already. <laughs>